intelligence officer uh, for the Defense Secretary's office, Mike Barrett. He's currently the CEO at Diligent Innovations, which is a consulting firm down in D.C. Mike, good to see you. Good afternoon, Chef. Uh, President Morsi of Egypt, I, he had a little bit for everybody, some, some condemnation of us, some for the civil war over there, also some words for Iran. What do you think? Well, it, I do think it's important that, uh, you know, we in the West understand this issue about freedom of speech. I mean, you know, this is an important thing, and I think it's going to come back. We saw it with the cartoons a few years ago. This notion that there are things that you just can't do, that we in the West have these freedoms and this sort of post-enlightenment approach. But that's not the, the reality on the Arab street. And with Morrissey, uh, what we're seeing is a reflection of kind of what that part of the world feels like. And we're going to have to understand and figure out how to deal with that. It is, it's a reality in foreign policy now that we're going to have to deal with post-Arab Spring. I, I, I read a couple of articles, one equating it to uh, fire in a crowded theater, it, it, making the argument that at least you, you can't or shouldn't be able to do something under freedom of speech that is absolutely going to incite violence and death. But w whether we ever get to that point is another matter entirely. Well, that's, that's the issue, right? So, I mean, as much as all of us hate and abhor that which, uh, you know, the Iranian president comes over here and says, right, he is speaking publicly, he's in our country saying these horrible things, you know, that are, that are just terrible and despicable. But we respect his right to say them, and then we have to counter them through, you know, looking at the facts and, and refuting the statements that he makes, denying the Holocaust, things like that. So, I mean, you know, it, that is a perfect example of why we believe that free speech has to win out. One of the ironies, of course, about the Egyptian leader is that he and many of the members of his organization, the Muslim Brotherhood, were thrown in prison for decades because they were doing things like political speech. And so you see that, you know, they want to be able to get in power and then to choose exactly which messages come out. That's the real danger of so-called democracy spreading through the Middle East, uh, you know, in, in an unorganized fashion. And one of the concerns, I guess, with Morsi and his Muslim Brotherhood is that they could have a big impact when the civil war is finally over uh, next door there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the big things we've seen throughout the region is that the Sunnis are taking over in places that were formerly ruled by Shia or by other dictators who are keeping it stable. And uh, that is certainly a, a big problem. It will put even more pressure on Iran and, of course, uh, you know, Saudi Arabia and the other areas. If we end up in a regional arms race, what happens with Syria being right on the Israeli border? That's going to be a very big issue. Yeah, it sure is. Mike Barrett live with us in D.C. Mike, always good of you. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. All right. The presidential candidates uh, battling over Ohio now. Man,